In today's video, I'm going to explore yet another VS Code AI coding assistant. Yes, I know what you're thinking. There are tons of these things now, but this really just might be the best free alternative to GitHub Copilot. So let's check it out. We're going to take a look at Codium. Now, Codium is the sponsor of today's video, but the viewpoints expressed are my own. I will give an unbiased analysis. So they call themselves the modern coding superpower. Let's take a look here. Loved by hundreds or thousands, hundreds of thousands of developers. Over 40 IDEs supported. That's crazy. All right, auto completion. Uh, what I'm seeing here is multi line auto completion. So that's pretty cool. Chat and cert. And let's see how they are comparing themselves to Copilot here. And I think this is the big piece here that it is free for individuals. Um, 40 plus IDEs and 70 plus languages, which is pretty crazy. Full repo context awareness. Interesting. Not only is this a SaaS, but it can be deployed on prem and NVPC, which is great for companies with proprietary code and their SOC two type two compliant. So let's see what we get. Uh, individual one C free forever auto completion, uh, AI chat assistant, unlimited usage. That's pretty big. And then it's trained on permissive data, which means it is not trained on code bases that are not open source to some degree. And then for teams, let's see, what do you get? If you pay $12 a month, you get admin dashboard, seat management, okay, GPT-4 uh, support. So that's uh, interesting. So I, I'm assuming the individual one is 3.5. All right, so we've got all of our different IDEs, uh, different languages. Uh, looks like your your tailwind image here is broken. Uh, we'll look past that. A um, bunch of partners and a lot of cool reviews. Oh, I just noticed this one from Swix. Pretty cool. All right, so let's check it out and see what it's capable of. So I installed the extension in VS Code, and I did have to sign in. But now this is what I get here under the Codium chat. Let's start out by seeing if it can create a basic Node.js Express server and create some custom endpoints. So I'm going to ask it using Node.js, how do I create an API endpoint for an HTTP server that dynamically converts currencies by fetching real-time exchange rates from a third-party service and the endpoint should accept yada yada. Okay, so let's see what it does. Okay, so it is pretty thorough here and fast as well. Uh, let's see what it did. Hmm. So it's having us use the HTTP package and node fetch. And I mean, I think this would technically work. Let's, um, let's also, let's modify this. I want to say, uh, let's use express for this instead. Okay. All right. That seems to be, uh, pretty good. So it looks like, uh, require express node fetch. We've got our app going on a port. Um, uh, we've got our get endpoint here. Our from and to, we're getting that from our request query. Uh, it's using this API and then doing the conversion. And it's got even some error checking in here and then it's running. So it seems like that would actually work. So let's do a thumbs up. This is actually one of the best parts of the app. I like when uh, you get something right, you give it the thumbs up and you get confetti. That's pretty, pretty amazing. I love the developer experience there. Okay, so what are our options? We can, looks like we can copy the code or insert the code. So I have a, a server.js file open here and let's go ahead and insert it and pretty easy. Okay, let's see if we can get it to explain a code block for us. Let's say, let's just highlight this bit here. And I'm not sure the proper way to go about this. Let's go Codium, uh, explain selected code block. All right, it says this code snippet creates an endpoint slash convert currency, which takes query parameters from and to and the amount fetches the exchange rate, external API from and to currencies, then calculates the converted amount and sends it as JSON response. Um, so yeah, that's exactly what it does. Let's see how well it does creating a JS doc style comment. Okay, so it looks like it's going line by line i'm hitting enter for each line hmm. okay so it keeps giving us the same example over and over there 
Um, but this is this is pretty good. So we've got our params from two amount. Each example was you know, basically the same thing, um, but pretty good. Now maybe I want to do that same thing, but with the bun JavaScript runtime. Well, I want to check out this as well, Codium Live. So Codium also has on their website this feature, Codium Live, which has various context-aware AI chatbots. So they have one for bun, Langchain, Next.js, and several others. So let's use the, the bun uh, chatbot and let's ask it a question. How do I use bun to build a simple HTTP server? Show a code example. Okay, so it's giving us this example here. It looks like it's importing serve from bun, uh, bun run server ts, and it's giving us some uh, context items here. What does this bring us to? Okay, so it looks like it's pulling most of its context directly from the bun repo. That's pretty cool. So this is really nice to be able to chat with some specific uh, AI chatbots uh, for different technologies. That could be helpful right here in the browser. Let's try a different use case. All right, so I have a Next.js app open here. And under the app directory, I have an actions.ts file here, and it's blank. So I want to create a server action to bring in movies from a database. So let me write a comment here. All right, so we'll create an Next.js server action that imports movies from the MongoDB sample database that is called sample inflix. Let's see what it does. All right, so first option here is import Mongo client. That is not what I want to do. I actually have a lib file here that controls uh, the MongoDB connection. So let's see what the next suggestion is. Okay, that's right. Client promise from my local file. Export async function, get movies. That looks good. And then client is going to await client promise. Sure. My DB is going to be sample inflix. Yep. Movies is going to await DB. Dot, uh, okay, dot collections uh, is going to be movie and then find all limit of two to array. That looks good. And then let's return movies. The only thing that I'm not seeing here is it probably should be uh, use server up here. And now I'm seeing these things above here, Codium refactor, explain and generate JS doc. That's pretty cool. Let's do the generate JS doc real quick and see what that does. Let's say yeah and add it. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, let's see what happens when we hit refactor. Okay, so it's giving us some options. Add comments and doc strings to the code. Add console log statements. Clean up this code. Check for bugs and null pointers. Implement the code for the to do comment. Oh. Uh, generate unit tests make oh there okay generate unit tests make this code strongly typed make this faster more efficient use async await instead of promises verbosely comment this code so that i can understand what's going on <laughs> let me see what that does okay so let's see let's just apply it and accept well yeah so basically just added a comment for most lines. So wait for MongoDB client to be ready. Connect to the sample inflix database. Retrieve all movies from the uh, movies collection. Limit to two and convert the results to an array. Um, it didn't um, say anything about the return, but I guess that's obvious. Um, and if I didn't explain, it should basically tell me that same thing, uh, just in a very short paragraph. Retrieves a list of movies from the sample inflix database, uh, uses MongoDB, and returns a promise that resolved to an array of movie objects. Pretty cool. Okay. And now I see here it says ask anything. Use at symbol to mention code blocks. So let's see if we can say at get movies. Let's say rewrite this function to remove all comments. Nice. So we could use that to uh, refactor probably or to add additional functionality. So I like that. Let's, uh, let's get some confetti and copy that. Now, if we have an error, let's see, let's remove one of these awaits and we're going to get an error here. 
And now we can see this new link here, Codium Explain Problem. So let's do that and see what it says. Okay, uh, I just want to reiterate the fact that it's so fast. It's crazy fast. So the issue property DB does not exist on type promise occurs when variable client is assigned to client promise directly, which is a promise that resolves to MongoDB client. To fix this, you need to await the client promise. So it very accurately found the issue and is fixing it here. So it notices that we need the await there. And what did it comment? Yeah, it even commented here, await the client promise. All right, so this is great again. And the only issue I see here though is copy code and then insert code. I wish that this had some way of just overriding the existing code here, but that's a, a feature request. Um, if I did insert code, it's going to kind of just insert it wherever my cursor was. So I need to copy this and then uh, actually it's going to copy the entire thing probably from client promise all the way up. Yeah, but now it works. So let's now implement this into a page here. So let's go over to our page and I want to bring these in. So let's see uh, here at the top, go right here. And this time I'm going to do control I and I'm going to say, use the get movies server action to display the movie titles on this page. And let's see what it does. Pretty good. Let's accept it. Uh, we need to get rid of this page that we had below that. And this is coming from our server actions. That's, let's see, is this, cannot find the module actions. Okay, so let's uh, see what happened here. This should be actions like that. So it was going up too many directories there. Then we have an issue here with our map. It says map does not exist on type promise. Yeah, this, so this is a, let's, I think we're going to need to await this and then uh, this is going to have to be an async function and then we should be good all right so even though it got it mostly right there were still some little issues which kind of goes back to the point of can ai really do it all but it's definitely helping and assisting so this seems like it should work um, let me just go ahead and save this and run it and see what happens Okay, so we've got movies and two titles from movies, and it actually worked, <laughs> which is pretty cool. All right, I want to try one more thing here. Let's see how good it is with Tailwind. So I want to add some Tailwind classes to this. So let's select that, Control I, and say Add Tailwind classes to create cards with the movie titles the cards should have a black background and white text let's just see what it does i really like how it does this diff here so we see what it was before and then what it is changing it to that's pretty cool so black background text white um some rounded corners and a shadow. I mean, that's pretty decent. Let's accept that. And let's save that and then go back and check it out. Well, we've got some interesting looking cards there, but it is working. Codium is pretty cool. Now, none of these AI coding assistants are perfect and they're not going to write all of the code for you. You still need to know what you're doing and but they should be able to help you to code faster. And for what, what I've seen, I think Codium is very capable of that. And for the price, it's a no-brainer. So give Codium a try and let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you want to see me review other AI coding assistants, let me know. And if this video was helpful, give this video a like and subscribe.